Hello, hello, welcome back. It has been a little while since I've done a video or audio recording for that matter. But I am back here and this video is inspired by a dream that I had last night, yo. <laughs> yeah, yo, we are going to get into it. But I had this very interesting, titillating, encapsulating dream last night where I was an observer of something very what most would consider to be bizarre and <laughs> I woke up first of all I usually wake up very well rested because I sleep good every single night yo that's just me I pride myself in the quality of sleep that I get every single night I make an intentional effort to just protect my sleep if I don't protect anything else, yo. My sleep, I make sure that I get really good, adequate amount of sleep in my bedroom. There's never really been a TV. I don't think ever. I don't think I ever had a TV in my bedroom. Um, because I knew way, 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 way back then that obviously TVs and bedrooms don't make for a good conducive environment for sleeping. So... Yeah, I don't think I, I can't recall now to think about it. I reflect over all the places I live. I don't think I ever, ever had a TV in my bedroom. If I did, it was only back when I was a little kid. Yeah, back when I was a little kid. I didn't know any better then. But yeah, since being an adult, never had a TV. So I sleep very good at night and with that I dream every single time I go to sleep and so I'm gonna tell you guys about this dream that I had last night oh my gosh funny enough I woke up I felt like I'm like mm, maybe think like hmm it made me think like <laughs> By the way, I'm burning this incense and I hate burning cheap incense. I ran out of my good quality incense. The only incense I like, they have to come from India. If on the package it doesn't say that it was made in India, I don't really like them. Those are the best incense, by the way. So I gotta go and re up today and get some more incense. Um, but yeah, I, so let me recap from what I can remember. And then I'm going to go into like what motivated or what could have possibly motivated this dream. Because I don't know. I'm, like I wake up sometimes from my dreams and of course I do reflection and I think like, okay, where does dream come from? What is this dream trying to communicate to me? Like what, what is the meaning of it? All right, and then some dreams is just like whatever, it's bullshit. It really has no meaning, no purpose. It's just, it's just there. It just happened. It's just somehow part of my subconscious mind. You know, like there are people who study dreams and they may conceptualize the content being just repressed memories or thoughts, things that we didn't completely deal with. Uh, in our waking hours, right, in our conscious mind that makes its way down to our subconscious mind and therefore appears in our dreams, right? And then dreams could be like premonitions of things that are going to happen. Um, dreams can be messages that come to us like when we're sleeping and unconscious and just something that is telling us, okay, this is, this is important, right? <laughs> you need to pay attention to this. So yeah, I do reflection, you know, when I have dreams. And again, like I said, I dream every single time I go to sleep. I dream 
And that's probably because my mind is like, it's just always at work and I'm always just thinking. I'm a very critical thinker. I analyze damn near everything. <laughs> Some people call it overthinking. I wouldn't necessarily call it that. But yeah, I'm a critical thinker. I am an INTJ personality. Um, we're going to get into that a little bit later <laughs> as a side note. Um, but yeah, so I... Let me get comfortable for this. Let me get a little bit of comfortable. And I choose to not like do the video aspect of this um, recording here because Facebook just be tripping. And it is really frustrating to go live and record a video where the outcome is not what you expect and not what you desire. They usually chop up my videos somehow where my video and my sound are out of sync. So that's just so annoying. <laughs> Very annoying. And as I speak on this, it's showing that it's slow connection. So that's just bullshit. It's never been slow connection before. Like I've lived in the same place going on five years now and didn't have any problems before when I moved here. So like why all of a sudden now? But anyway, we shall continue with this video. So, in the dream, hold on, give me a second, guys. Oh my God. So the people in the dream, they were men and it was all men. I believe I was the only woman in the dream and we were in this room and it's funny how dreams usually don't have a beginning or an end. It's just like you're kind of just plopped into this middle of a scene that <laughs> is already occurring. At least that's how the brain remembers it. Uh, and <laughs> like I have bizarre dreams. This is the thing I have. I've always had like bizarre dreams. When I think about the content of my dreams, when I was a kid, I used to have nightmares a lot. And it was always like the theme of my nightmares was like someone chasing me. I'm trying to get away <laughs> from someone. <laughs> And that thing persisted for many years as a child, right? Crazy. I used to like have to, I used to wake up out of my dreams and like go to my mom and my dad's room and want to like get in their bed. And my dad would allow it up until a certain point. He got so pissed. It was like, no, you're not doing this anymore. He forced me to stay in my room. But he did give me a recommendation. He was like, open your, this is because I was raised in a, Christian-based household. So he was like, open your Bible, put it under your pillow, go to sleep. You're not going to have any drink. <laughs> but yeah, I remember that shit. Like it was yesterday. And so, yeah, I, my dreams are very vivid. And I just be like, what in the entire world? But it goes to show you some reflection of just my mind. Because my mind is just that <laughs> what most or some would consider to be quote unquote bizarre or a typical, or just a deviant from the norm. And so it was men and I'm sitting there and I'm observing. I'm not even like participating. I'm not even part of the actual act, but it was a group of men. And I remember they, and it was like, it was only men, right? And, and they were like pleasuring each other through the anus. But it wasn't 
it wasn't penetration through like like penile penetration. It was like them fingering each other in what some may call like the bussy. <laughs> Which is basically like a man's asshole, right? Or his quote unquote pussy. And I remember during this process as I'm as I'm observing this, I and being entertained and I wouldn't say I'm, I'm aroused like sexually aroused but it's still arousal in the form of just like being uh, engrossed in this right you know like something captures your attention you're kind of like an engrossed and encapsulated in that moment where it has your full undivided attention that is what it was, right? So it wasn't like I was aroused like physically or physiologically or like it had an impact on my body necessarily, but <laughs> my attention was fully uh, directed at what was in front of me. And I remember even the sounds. There were sounds in the dream where it was like that um, what do they call it? Macaroni? <laughs> they like the macaroni style, right? Um, where, you know, they were penetrating each other with their finger, going in and out, in and out, in and out. Their anus. And I'm watching this. And I remember it then had become very, like, disgusting somewhat. Because I'm as I'm seeing this, as the act is progressing... Um, there's like aftermath to it where the person who was penetrating, I guess what they call the top, um, with his fingers, he would like look at himself, right? Look at the aftermath and somehow it was like brown shit. I guess you can call like shit, <laughs> like, like doodle. <laughs> and he was like wiping it off. He was like, I'm trying to remember, he was like wiping it off. And I think he like wiped it on his shoe, like a white shoe. And then his shoe then became like the white shoe that he was wearing then became like covered in like brown coloration, right? <laughs> and then I was like, oh my gosh, yo. But I, I, again, like my concentration could not be broken. My attention was fully on what was happening in front of me. And the people in the dream, I recognize. <laughs> like the people in the dream were very familiar faces. I'm just like, interesting. Again, like I said, these are men. And so one of the people in the dream was a family member. I was just say a cousin. Of course, I'm not going to name any names here, but it was a cousin. And then another person in the dream was a colleague. Again, I'm not going to get too specific, right? But it was a colleague and it just made me think. Like when I woke up, of course, I could do my analysis and I'm thinking like before I went live here and I'm just like, I'm lying in bed and I'm just like pondering like, Wow. Wow. And I could see those two people that I just named. I could see them actually in that act in real life. Like I can see that this can be something that is very much real and true for them in real life. Right? Like it wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if this dream here is like a foreshadowing, you know of something that is already happening with these two men. And not like together, obviously, but like, <laughs> you know, I'm just like, wow, okay, interesting. And so then it made me think about the characteristics of these men, right? Like my cousin and this colleague and they are not with a woman. They're unpartnered. 
And I'm just like, mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now listen, everybody knows me that who people that truly know me know that I'm, you know, sex positive. I embrace you know, sexuality, sexual expression, however you choose to identify and who you choose to show up as, that's just, and that's your business. I don't cast judgment to each his own. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, but a lot of people obviously are living in their own um, cages that they create for themselves, right? In their own closet and one may attribute it to, oh, you know, we live in a society that is not really that accepting of deviant behaviors or socially deviant behaviors that kind of go against the grain or the norm, such as homosexuality, right? Bisexuality and things of the sort. And so a person may attribute to that, but I always say like, listen, irrespective of that you still have a choice right and everyone is an adult and who you are is just who you are so there comes a point in everyone's life where you no longer kind of acquiesce to the norms the standards the mores of what has been imposed upon you when you when you didn't have a choice right when you were just a child kind of soaking up this information from your parents and from people in your immediate uh, surroundings and, and social circle you didn't really have much of a choice right because you were at the the will of them who were responsible for your upbringing right but then you know when you become an adult and you then are learning accountability, responsibility, right? And you then are becoming more independent. And granted, this can be culture specific, uh, specific given that there are certain cultures where, you know, one may say that they're more like enmeshed, um, where they, a person within that culture may have. Uh, less autonomy over their own decisions and just choices and, and who they are, their sense of identity. So everyone kind of thinks alike and acts alike and eats alike and just <laughs> is this kind of one uh, cohesive uh, unit. Whereas, you know, in certain other dynamics and other cultures, you know, a person is allowed to express themselves and be an individual, right? And so I think obviously that factor can definitely heavily influence a person's ability to just be able to, or a sense of ability to be able to kind of step away from, you know, this group that has so much of an influence on who they are and just be themselves. Right, just step out and just be you. And, and when I say be you, you have this inner pull within yourself that is saying, This is who I am, whatever that may be. Right, or some, you know, is them just wanting to be gay. Right, for some, it could be them wanting to be a leader, right, or go down a certain career path. You know, whatever that something is, it's something that is pulling you in a certain direction. And I feel like, listen, you are the you are the pilot of your own ship, right? Like you, I mean, did I say that right? You are the captain of your own ship, right? You are the pilot, obviously, of your own course in life that you set for yourself. And so you are responsible for your own decisions and the outcome of those decisions that you make. No one else, no one else is responsible for that. You have to live your life, you know? But again, like I said, going back, so many people put themselves in their, in this cage and they are confined by the perceived judgment of other people. So they don't step out and become that person that they are destined to be. And thinking about these two people, again, going back to the dream, it's like, 
again, like I said, anyone who know me know, like I'm a very deeply spiritual person. And this is something that has been going on for many, many years, ever since I was a little girl. Like I just see certain things, y'all. I'm very in tune and I see things that other people sometimes don't see. And it can be shocking because it's just like, how did you know that? How did you know that, right? But it's, it comes to me in different ways. It comes to me, you know, through visions, through dreams. And it's just like, through, through just my own kind of intuition and my own spiritual, spiritual sense. And I'm like, yeah, I, I believe that those, that that's who they are. And so it kind of also goes to the thought of, and this is realization is just like, it, it feeds back into something that I've been thinking about recently where this um, person like <laughs> has been reaching out to me and, you know, wanting me to hang out and, and listen, Anybody know, I am that person, like, I moved to New York City for a reason, right? I always like to go out. I'm, I can be a homebody, but at the same time, I can be a person that goes out and does things I like to explore. I'm an adventurous person. That's just who I am. Uh, and I do like to go out and explore, but I also like authenticity. And... I can smell when a person is disingenuous many miles away. I just like for people to be themselves because when I see that a person is um, behaving in a way that is inauthentic and is not their true selves, right? For me, the way that my mind interprets things, it becomes a perceived threat. Like that's a threat to my existence because they are acting in a way that's not real, right? They are masking themselves to be one thing when they're really something else. Be who you are. You don't have to front. You don't have to fake. You don't have to come in a disguise. When it comes to me, <laughs> when it comes to me, you are who you are. And I will respect that. And I can appreciate that. And I can value that. Um, but yeah, it does something to me. And so as a result, I have been, I've been saying, no, I've been saying, mm -mm, I'm not going to hang out with you. Right. And the person may consider this as a form of rejection, um, because I am not interested. I'm not interested in going out, hanging out with this person. And because it's the same thing. It's not just this one particular person. Like, I am this way when it comes to anybody. Like, when it comes to anybody, whether family, friends, colleagues, it's just like, I like realness. I don't like people that gossip. I never did. Because I feel like we got enough problems of our own that we don't have to go out and look at what's happening on someone else's porch. We can focus on what's happening on our own porch unless you are the part of the solution to what's happening on someone else's porch but nah I never liked that hence the reason I've always been more introverted to myself right now I know how to obviously interact with other people I know how to go out and initiate conversations and make friends with other people um I know how to build network right with other people I've obviously done that very successfully with my business, my literary organization, Ubawa, that I have founded back in 2009. However, yeah, I pride myself in being able to just nurture real relationships and just solid, genuine relationships. And when I sense the person is being fake or phony and they're withholding, you know, parts of who they are, I'm like, mm-mm. I don't want to have anything to do with that. I am a very unique individual. And this is another thing. Another thing for why I am cautious when it comes to certain like friendships or um, interacting with certain people because people may see you 
outside looking in. And in their mind's eye, they see one thing, but they just don't know, right? And for me, clearly I'm very expressive, right? I am who I am and that's never going to change. Who I am in my core is not going to change, obviously. Now, I'm constantly evolving. We're all constantly evolving as we should be. Um, different aspects of ourselves, shall I say, are taking the form and shape that it should take as we progress through this journey. But who I am at my core, that is not going to change. And so... Going back to this dream connected to these two people that I know in real life, and it just going, it just makes me think like, yo, it's confirmation. I laugh because it's confirmation in a sense that, yeah, that's why I don't fuck with you. And it's not that oh I don't fuck with you because you like to get fingered in your bussy. <laughs> it ain't even that. It's that you are pretending to be this one person when really you something else. And and before this dream, a woman said, well, how are you going to draw this conclusion based on a dream? Listen, before the dream, the dream is just confirmation. It's like before, like I already knew that. Like you already know, you already like, you picked up on certain things. And, you know, back in the day, back in high school, middle school, we used to call it gaydar. But you know how to pick up on certain things in people. You just pick up on certain things. And I, that's that's me, yo. I pick up easily on certain things. I'm like, mm-hmm. Keep that shit 100. Keep it 100. And I find that shit to be so unnerving and annoying when a person... Let me tell you, you know what annoys the shit out of me? It's like when a person want to be my friend, when a person want to hang out, like, and then not only that, but they feel entitled to do that. Like, you're talking about a person like myself who really values, like, I really value myself. I see myself very high. And with that obviously i'm very selective and protective of who i invite into my inner space my inner sphere i've been living in the same space here in upper east side manhattan for four years and when i tell you only two people only two people have been inside this space and i look back and i tell you one person really shouldn't have been up in here right he shouldn't have been up in here but he only came each person so each of those two people only came one time. And outside of that, I don't be letting motherfuckers in my shit. I don't at all. Even when maintenance got to come, I'll be checking the chin, checking their ass like, hold on. And they know because, again, being a person that's deeply rooted in spirituality, I know what comes with those bodies that people walk around with. Those energies that they carry. You can see and sense those energies and you don't want no, sometimes you just don't want no parts of that. And I like to be attached to people. And this is the thing. This is what happens when you excel to a higher level of consciousness. Because I look at myself now, I look at myself many years back and it's just like sometimes I ask myself like, damn, were things better off when I didn't know as much. Granted, I was always in tune, right? I was always in tune with my spirituality and deeply connected to source. But now there are filters that I look through. And with that, I'm very calculated. So much calculated in a sense where it's just like, nah, man. You just don't want to have anything to do with a lot of people because you already know the end before it happens. You already know the trajectory of certain relationships before they even form. That's how good I've gotten. <laughs> 
All right, it is one thing if you didn't know, but like I said back in the day, you know, yes, I've always been deeply connected, but in terms of being able to analyze a relationship um, before it even forms, knowing the trajectory, knowing the discourse that relationship is going to take, because I'm well studied when it comes to people and relationships, much more now than I was back then, I can predict with a certain degree of certainty how this is going to go. And especially knowing myself and then knowing you. I'm like, nah, this shit ain't gonna work. <laughs> this shit is not going to work. Okay. Um, and people, they, and like, like I said, I'm always kind of skeptical of people who are very quick. Like, people obviously are drawn to me. People online, people in person. Like, I get this. And I be looking at them like, mm-mm. You don't want none of these problems, baby. Like, you think you know, but you don't want none of these problems. You don't. And I say problems in a sense that I think through the experience of other people, I can be a very challenging individual. Give me a second. I can be a very challenging individual through the lens and experience of another person because I realize that a lot of people are obviously brainwashed and they're conditioned and socialized to think, behave, and act a certain way. <laughs> and I don't operate and I never have operated from that paradigm. I just don't. So then we have these two different worlds coming together, potentially, <laughs> which is not going to happen, but, you know, in theory, coming together, and they think that they want to enter into my sphere. I'm like, mm -mm. you don't want to enter into this sphere. Are you, or, or do you want to enter into this sphere? Because you got to be ready to enter into this fear. I promise you, you will leave a different person. You will not leave my sphere unchanged. No one has. That's the thing. That's the thing. So, mm, that's some good cranberry juice. I am mostly by myself. Like, when I go out, I have no issue with this, though. That's the difference. See, a lot of people are conditioned in such a way that they need to have people around them uh, when it comes to going out, when they go out to restaurants, when they go out to do fun things, activities. Um, they need someone. It's like a must-have. Whereas for me, I actually prefer the opposite. <laughs> I'm different. Y I prefer to go out by myself. I prefer to be by myself. Again, I can be around other people. So sometimes people confuse the two. Just because a person prefers to be alone doesn't mean that they cannot get along well with other I can be around other people. I just prefer to be by myself. I work with people. Now, granted, most of my job really consists of me working independently, thankfully. I, I, I got a good, decent job career where I do psychiatric evaluations. I have my own office. I don't have anybody over my shoulder checking for me and dictating this and dictating that. Like, mm-mm. I have my own office. I have a schedule. 
of individuals that I see each day and they're different people every single day. So that works for me. But when it comes to my social personal life, I yeah, I prefer just to be by myself. Now, if there was someone that was just equally as in tune and one may say crazy, quote unquote, but I don't consider myself crazy because I am me. But if there was such a person like that, which I know they exist, like we out here, we out here in these streets, you know. Um, but again, again, I'm very careful and calculated. And then, um, yeah, I'm particular too. Like, and I said this before, you know, just me being um, an African American woman who's very centered in her ethnic identity and her heritage being a pan-african proud unapologetic pan-african woman like i don't be fucking with white people like that i don't like i can work with them i can do business with them they can be my colleagues we can discuss philosophical ideas like we can vibe in that way but my personal like my intimate space my space when it comes to after hours is very intimate you know what i'm saying it's very sacred that's something that i protect and i just don't be vibing like that like, that's just not mm -mm. and i don't give a i don't give an example like even family i had family that you know was here in new york and and this is crazy <laughs> what may say it's crazy but this y'all i'm just, my, my mom and my dad and those, I would say, the only two people that probably get me, aside from my sister, who's three years my senior, there's only a few people that really, really get it. And my sister, she called this shit early. She was like, you weird. <laughs> but she she understood it, though, when I was young. You know what I'm saying? My mom, my dad, clearly, they, they, they had me, so of course they get me. But, like, even, like, I have a family member that was here in New York, and she hit me up, and she was like, and I know I'm pretty sure she expected, she was like, oh, I'm in New York, I'm going to hit my girl, I hit my cousin up, and we going to, nah. See, I had a kind of person, dial it back, dial it back. Nah, it's not going down like that. It's not going like, no, we're not hanging out. I don't want to hang out. Nah. I just protect my, my energy. I protect my peace, and I feel like, when it comes to a point, I, I reached this point in life where, and I, I want to say I've I always been like this. Granted, of course, I've always been an introvert, but when it comes to my willingness and openness to just, I don't know, be around people and just kind of spur the moment kind of visits and, and you know, not, I feel like I develop into that person and going through different experiences which have given me a greater appreciation for who I am and my energy, right? I am very protective and I just feel like not everybody is deserving of my time. So I, when people will say, oh, can we go hang out? Or I'm in town, I'm in New York, let's link up. Nate, no, I get this a lot. And I just be looking at my phone like, <laughs> I just, yo, <laughs> no, no, it's funny because now that I really, I'm saying this out loud and I'm thinking this, I just be like, why do you, like what gave you that much confidence to message me? And think that I am going to cut time out of my day, my precious day, to spend time with you. Like, what do I gain? That's the point I'm at in life right now. I don't feel like there is a benefit. <laughs> the only, listen, unless it was like, you got to be my father, you got to be my mama, my sister, or my nieces and nephews. Those are the only people I probably would make those exceptions. And I'm like, okay, you can pop up, drop up a dime, and boom. Unless, you know, I will make myself available to you. But we don't have that connection like that. And granted, me and my sister, we've been through our ups and downs. And this is my closest sister to me in age. I do have five sisters and two brothers. Um, but 
Yeah, I would definitely make that exception to my closer sister in age just because like we came from the same womb and we've been through a lot and yes we don't may not agree on everything but if she was a pop-up in new york and be like hey i'm here oh yeah <laughs> i feel like i'm indebted because my mom who has now since transitioned to be with the ancestors i feel like she would definitely hold me accountable if i did not Except the invitation to my sister was to come and visit me. She would be like, Danielle, <laughs> she would get on me about that. So, nah, she, like, my sister came, I'm there. Drop of a dime, I don't care. Even my cousin, who I just mentioned, when I said I had a dream about the two people, the two men, there was many men in the dream, but <laughs> those two were the ones getting an action, that bussy action. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that cousin right there like if he was a pop-up boom i'm there it's just certain people but everybody you, you ain't you ain't privy like that <laughs> and that's what get me is that like, you think you got people that really think that they got access to you like that are they privy nah nah buddy you ain't privy i look at my phone i'll be looking at my phone and discuss like what gives people the audacity to think that I can make myself available to you like that. You haven't even earned that right of access to me like that. Hell to the fuck no. Hell to the fuck no. Um, going back to the dream, though, I do reflect and I ask myself, okay, where did it come from? Honestly, I think I know where it came from. Combination of factors, given that one of those people did reach, a has been reaching out to me and wanted to go out and I have been declining <laughs> politely, declining and I don't think it's ever going. I don't think I'm ever going to. Mm -mm. Why? I mean, granted, we have went out. We went, we actually met up and we went out. But I think my experience in going out with that person, not that it was a bad experience, but again, I'm big on vibes and I was picking up on certain things that signaled to me. Nah, bruh. <laughs> nah like I felt like and granted this is a, a colleague of mine we used to work together and I felt like in, in certain ways he was trying to come on to me and listen because if people think they know you they don't bitch you don't know me like that some people do know me like the people I say that boom y'all can you can pop up any time only certain people they know me <laughs> They know my motherfucking ass, man. Bitch, I don't play. I don't, and I don't, that's the reason why I feel like I'm very calculated and careful who I invite into my space. Bitch, this ain't for my safety. Bitch, this for your safety. Nigga, this is for you. <laughs> this ain't for me. <laughs> Y'all will fuck your ass up. And I feel like I pride myself because I'm doing a really good job. Knock on wood. I've never been arrested. I never go to jail, no charges and none of that. And sometimes I feel like that's my biggest fear and I need to kind of overcome that fear because I they feel it, they say that, you know, what you are afraid of, you attract and I damn sure don't want to attract that fate. Um, but I just know me and like people, again, I feel like I live in a different world than a lot of people. Like, I have my own mind, and then they, y'all be in this other world that y'all condition, and y'all operate from a certain paradigm. And when those two worlds come together, I'm just like, hold on. <laughs> that ain't going to fly. I'll give you an example. Like, for me, my space, again, I say it's very sacred. So when you come into my space, I take off my shoes at my front door. Shoes are off. And you got certain people, they don't live by that. They wear shoes, <coughs> excuse me, they wear sho shoes throughout their house, right? 
Everybody got their own rules in their house. But for me, because I hold my space to be sacred, yeah, I'm rigid when it comes to that. Nigga, I will kick you out my shit. <laughs> and I will end a whole so-called friendship or potential friendship. I, like I said, it was two people total who've entered into this space since I've been here. One being a very close African friend. I met him when I was back living in Los Angeles. He lives here in New York and the Bronx, but he was very close. He's still, he was still cool where when I was living in LA and I would come visit New York, him in New York, he would give me the key to his space. I would have full range over his space when even when he's not there, right? Um, this is how people trust me. Because I'm just that trustworthy. Like, I'm that kind of person. See, people trust me. I just don't motherfucking deal with people like that because I see into your ass. I see into you. A lot of people, they just don't hold that level of ethic and morals. We just live by different standards. But anyway... And so going back, the other person, other person was a guy I was dating, young motherfucker. He was a little, a little bit younger than me. And, you know, he came and I invited, to, I invited him into my shit. And he got the big head. This is what happens when you date down. You got hypergamy and with hypogamy or whatever. Women, when women date down, meaning they date below their standard or the level in which they are at, the social economic level in which they are at, they date down. Me, I make over six figures, right? So if I'm dating down and a guy ain't used to that, and you got guys that say, oh, well, blah, 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 blah. they got all these theories, and I can make a whole separate video about that where they say that there are a lesser ratio of men to women, so women should just settle for what they can. Nah, I, I can't even say the whole complete shit because that ain't going down like that with me. I'm not settling. Settle for what? I value who I am. And unless a man values me as much as I value, uh-uh. I don't need that in my life. And I will go many more years being single. I've been single, technically single, because my last serious long-term relationship ended 2017. I've dated like on and off since then, right? But I'm okay with being by myself, being single, because listen, I think back and I reflect back on those relationships where, like I said, over half of my adult life, I've been in a relationship with a man. I had three long-term relationships within a span of 10 years. And those 10 years, I've lived with those three men. So I know what it's like. Hell to the fuck not. I'm missing out on what. But going back, this person I was dating, I had, you know, let this motherfucker come visit his first and last time in my shit. And he felt... He was smelling himself, right? I had went and we were sitting in the living room, vibing, sipping some wine. And I went to the restroom. I went to go use the restroom. And when I came back, I saw he was kind of a little fumbling and fidgeting. I'm like, what you doing? I looked over and I see that he had taken pictures of our wine glasses sitting next to each other but you can see like other aspects of my place in the background where if anybody who follow me <laughs> right which i have what over 20 some thousand followers on facebook and people watch my videos obviously on youtube it's just like they will know like i have very distinct uh, artwork and things that's hanging up in my place that you cannot you <laughs> be able to identify if you knew, right? That this is my place. And I'm just like, oh, huh? I look at the picture. I'm just like, yo, you can't be taking pictures of my shit. And he was like, this is my phone. <laughs> Baby, you gotta go. Mm -mm. 
I say, this ain't going to work. And he was like, what, what, what? And then he quickly began to, I saw a shift that happened in his mind. Like I could see his face. It's like, wait, what? I want to like, I'm different than other women. Yo, shit. Whatever, whatever women you've been dealing with. That's them. I'm not her. Okay. We're going to get this shit squared away from the jump. I'm not her. So with that being said, either you delete that goddamn picture, you got to go. But we, of course we ain't work out because he was on some other shit anyway. He was a bit immature and, you know, so that gives you an example. Like I'm very particular, baby. Uh, like we gotta build that trust. You don't just come off on real. You taking pictures and shit like like nah. And then it would be different if he had invited me to his space. Now, granted, he lived with his uh, I think two sisters, and they had inherited this family house. Their family, I think, their mom and their dad was no longer living, but they had inherited their family um, house. And I'm like, okay, when I'm gonna get to see your place? He was like, oh well, my sisters, you know, they don't feel comfortable inviting company over. Like, he made it seem like, oh, we got to negotiate. Like, fuck all that. We got to do all of that? Like, nah. Because, nigga, I took a risk of fighting your motherfucking black ass over to my shit. And you want to sit up here and say, oh, your sisters, you know, they careful about bringing... Nah, like, you don't trust my. Nah. So that right there, nah had to make a decision you know it ain't going to work but i again going back like i just don't be um mm -mm, i don't be sharing my time and my energy with just any and everybody like that i question people's motives i, I wonder like okay yeah you may want to see me you can see me, but you damn sure ain't coming to my place. And a lot of people just somehow want to come to my place. Oh, I thought maybe I can come to your place. And again, this other person that I had a dream about, <laughs> my colleague who happens to be white, when we last hang, hung out, he was like, oh, we hung out in the Upper East Side area, which he had chose that. He was like, oh, we can meet up at, you know, this, I know this bar in your neighborhood. Like, Granny, <laughs> it was a nice bar. Um, it had like historic value to it. It was, you know, nice little rustic kind of set up to it. And we had a good time, but I was just like, again, feeling a vibe. And then he kept saying, oh yeah, we can go back to your place. Like if I'm already, if I listen, think about me. If I say no at my age of 40 years old, right? Cause I get it. You know, teenagers may say, oh no. And they may not be unsure, right? They may be unsure rather. Um, but nigga, if I say no, my no is a no, <laughs> it's not a hesitant no, right? And so for you to come back around and then say, oh, we can go to your, like, go to your place. Like you just said this again <laughs> and I'm saying, uh, no. Right. And then I think he said at least three, four times suggesting that we can go to my place after we had hung out. And I'm just like, why is he trying to come to my shit? Granted, I've never been to his place. This is what gets me. I haven't. You haven't invited me to your shit. Be a man. Like men who carry the label of man do not deserve that title. Some, shall I say, they don't. Because it's just like, who raised you? When you're dealing with a woman, you lead as a man. So do not ask her to do anything that you have not first demonstrated to her yourself. You ask her to come to my domain where I sleep by my fucking self, where I pay all the bills. Every single penny of $2,500 per month by my goddamn self with money that I worked hard for by myself. Uh, and you got a nerve to sit up and ask me to come to my shit. I've never been to your place. And granted, as I say, we worked together before. But that don't mean a goddamn thing. I'm about energy exchange. 
So if you want to take some of my energy, if you asking something of me, you better at giving whatever you ask of me. You asking to come to my shit, then I should have been to your place. And even so, because <laughs> that I've had a situation where I've dated guys, even what last year I dated a guy lived down Valley Stream. And I actually did go to his place. He invited me to his place first, but he never been to mine. And he never will. Because he make it to that point. But I've been to his place several times. And it was a nice, it's a, it's, it was a nice house. But I'm just like, mm -mm. nope. I ain't sure you ain't passed that test. You ain't passed that test. Because again, I'm like, like I said, I can't emphasize this shit enough. I'm deeply spiritual. Yes, and I can be, one may say, hypersensitive, but I can detect a lot of shit. And I've been this way, yo. Like I say, go way back since I was a little girl. I used to creep motherfuckers out, yo, when I was young. I used to creep motherfuckers out because I can see down to the depths of the earth. I can see right past the external, the exterior, yo. I read they ass the reason why i'm into in this profession i'm in now but i see right through the shit yo and it can be scary to some people and um, i walk i'm unafraid i'm not afraid of nothing i'm not afraid of your motherfucking ass so the little tactics and manipulation and things that they try to do to other people that may work when they try it with me and they see that shit don't work. Sometimes that can be frightening and threatening because they're like, wait, I've done this with other people before and I got what I wanted and it worked, but it don't work with her, <laughs> right? So then they got to think of something else and then it makes them ponder like, who is she? That shit don't work with me. It's not going to fly. I've had even supervisors. I cannot exaggerate and make this shit up. When I was going through my doctoral studies back in LA, I had supervisors who were literally afraid to do supervision with me to the extent that they would, it, we somehow was able to make it into like a meeting. We had a scheduled supervision meeting and I would make it to their office, but they I would feel so un they, they would feel so uncomfortable that they would be standing up the entire time during supervision. They could not sit down. I'm like, why? Why can you not sit down? I said, look at them. And then they got to a point where they had to write a letter to my school, and and then they telling me, oh, you know, it feels like I'm going into a battlefield. I'm like how? When I show up, I'm kind, I speak to you, I'm cordial. I do ask questions and I do agree on some things and then other things I may question. I have not, I've never been the typical quote unquote student because most students, they are expected in their condition and trained to just sit in class, agree with everything the teachers say, don't ask questions in the sense where like, they want you to ask questions like in terms of being curious, but not to challenge, right? And I go against the grain. If something, listen, if something don't ain't adding up and it does not make sense, I am going to question that, right? And that's what gets them shaking in their knees, yo. And I've, and these are psychologists who have been in the game for many years, black women, and I had they had shaking and they got their knees shaking. Afraid to do supervision. I, and yo, at, I look back now, I can speak about this with such confidence now, but back then when I tell you the impact that had on me, like I was shocked and hurt. I was hurt because I'm like, yo, I'm a black woman, you black. Like, why are you treating me this way? You know? Like, what is it? But again, I feel like it's my spirit inside me that I shake up motherfuckers' demons, yo. That it, I, I don't know any other way to explain it. What else could it be? Because I'm coming to supervision. I have a smile on my face. Like, I'm going in with a positive attitude. I'm actually here to learn. 
And again, I'm like, what is it? The same thing, going out on dates. Niggas is shaking in their goddamn boots, sweating. Like, why are you sweating? Nervous than a motherfucker. I triggered niggas' demons, yo. I triggered their traumas. I don't even be trying to do this. I promise you, I don't. I just don't. I don't try. But because I do come with this fierce energy, I know I have it. I've always had it. And I think sometimes people, they get mistaken based on what a person look like. Because, yes, you know, typically, you know, typically I'm an attractive woman. I do have a stern face. I can be I have a, like a serious face. A lot of people tell me, oh, you look young. Much younger than what I actually am. And, yeah, they are mistaken when they see, well, damn, she she's packed, yo. She packed with energy. She packed with this life force. And that's what get them tripped up. I'm a person, you ain't gonna fuck over on me. And that is just come from my mama. Cause my mama was a kind of woman. You ain't gonna fuck. She was listening. My mom was short. She was like five foot three, maybe. She was short. But you ain't gonna fuck over on her. Oh, you ain't gonna fuck over. You ain't gonna treat her any kind of way. Cause she gonna put you in your place. And so that come like I get that from her. It, it just ain't gonna go down like that. <laughs> we can like listen, as long as shit is smooth and you respectful towards me, we good. But if you cross me, Mm, we have problems because I'm going to make sure that you're not going to do you want to respect me I show you respect you show me respect that's how it goes we don't have to deal with each other point blank period so I say all that to say <laughs> bussy dreams <laughs> yo bussy fucking dreams the shit that go on behind closed doors, they say we will never know, but I know, baby. I know what's going on behind your closed doors. And even with my cousin, like we always kind of, <laughs> we kind of suspected. You drank my cranberry juice. <laughs> but we always kind of suspected that this cousin was going to be gay. We used to say that, like, because he used to cry all the damn time. Like, nigga, why is you crying? Every little thing. He would run back and tell his mama, mama, mama. <laughs> and so we used to, like, joke, like, this is going to be gay. And listen, nothing against gay people. I'm just saying, though. But there you are. You, listen, you are who you are. That's all I'm saying. Embrace who you are unapologetically. You know? And then going back to the other motherfucker, my colleague, like, I feel like, man, you can tell, you can tell by the language, like, have conversations with men and listen to their views on women. You can just tell those men are a bit metrosexual. Or they are aversive towards women. They Some of them don't like women. Now they do what they believe is to be socially acceptable by dating a woman, even having kids by a woman. That don't mean that they're heterosexual. That just means that they're trying to fit into society and they want to be accepted. But deep down inside, that's not who they are. And I know because I am a free flowing spirit, like free spirited woman. And I embrace like really a spectrum of sexuality. I have that within me. That's always been in here within me. So I attract that. So I understand why certain energies of the likes of that colleague that I had a dream about, like I understand why they could be attracted to me. They are, um, because of what's in them, right? And they are looking for a level of um, 
acceptance and validation that they're not getting other places. And that's fine. But what's not fine is this facade and the pretending as you are one thing when you really something else. Because if we were to evolve, and granted, I can take it there. Well, we can evolve into, you know, quote unquote friends. But I already, like I say, I can, you know, I can predict. I can see the trajectory, trajectory of something before it happens and the outcome of something before it happens. Like, I already know. Because I know me. And again, I study with other people. I'm well studied. So I already know how certain shit will play out. And we're going to bump heads, and they're gonna, you know, it's gonna come to a point where my phone gonna be like, hold on, hold up, hold, <laughs> it's gonna be like, oh, because I'm a dominant energy. Granted, I always talk about how, yes, I am submissive, I identify as a submissive woman, but what y'all fail to realize that's only in the context of me being with a dominant man. In an intimate, serious relationship. That's, that's the only time I submit. <laughs> Outside of that, bitch, I ain't submitting to no goddamn body. No friends. I'm not submitting. Even on a job. Uh, you know? But that's just because I'm naturally dominant. It's going to go my way. It's not about, oh, I need to have my way. But it's just like, I, I dominate. That's naturally dominant people, that's just them. They alpha, they're going to take the lead. And your ass going to fall in line. <laughs> and if you think that you alpha and you dominant and you're going to run me, that ain't going to happen like that in a friendship. It, it just ain't going to happen. Unless I let you. Unless we reach that level of you know trust and cohesiveness where I allow you to do that. But there's going to be a lot of things happening, transpiring. And I feel like with that energy exchange that will happen between me and another person that I've invited to my sphere, like I say, you're going to leave a different person. And a lot of things, beliefs that you may thought that you had, you probably ain't going to have. Because I'm that, I'm just that impactful on a I'm just that, that's just me. I've seen this. I've seen it happen. So I can say this out loud because this has happened many times over. Even when I was younger, I set the example. I'm a very influential person. And then when I'm to myself, I'm listening to myself. Facebook know that shit. A lot of these platforms that I'm on, that you see, I have a lot of followers, but not much engagement because listen, they shut my shit down. That's what it is. They know who's influential. And a person like me, they may consider to be a threat. They gotta change a lot of y'all thought patterns. <laughs> You're going to be different. I disrupt a lot of uh, systems and things, how we, ways people operate and ways people think that clearly is not working, it's dysfunctional. You know, come to disrupt that shit. I made a video about um, Dr. Umar. This was a while back. Of course, I'm an avid supporter of the movement and the mission that he's on. But I've said, you know, he's no longer a threat to the white power structure. Because he is becoming watered down and a lot of the rhetoric that he speaks, you can tell that there was some there is some infiltration of the white power structure ideologies that his mind, his philosophies have been polluted by. Because if you listen closely, yeah. So he's no longer a threat. So he can blow up and be on, um, what you might call it, Breakfast Club and all of these major platforms because he, he ain't 
no threat no more. He's, he's not a threat. Go and watch it. I'm not going to go into the detail here, but he's not a threat. And people who are a threat, it's not that we directly try to be. It's just we are born this way. Always been different and just held on to that uniqueness. Whereas other people just are easily manipulated and brainwashed. And that ain't been me. Mm -mm. I get it. But on that note, baby, <laughs> I want y'all to comment and let me know y'all thoughts on <laughs> this dream. <laughs> Oh, y'all, like I say I dream every night, and I probably should keep a dream journal. I've been saying this for the longest. I should write these things down, y'all. Do a whole book on these dreams that I be having. I'm sure there's some type of pattern that I can connect the dots through, y'all, uh, with these dreams. But <laughs> when I say, like, after I had the dream, I woke up, and I'm just like, hmm. I felt like the ending, obviously, it was a shitty ending. Because <laughs> I'm like, ew. And I'm glad in a way that it did in that way because it reminded me that this is something I would never be a part of. <laughs> ever. Going forward, shall I say. <laughs> I will ever be a part of that shit is disgusting as hell. Around. The smell and just the visual um, of the shit part right not so much like the sound the macaroni sound and the actual act in and of itself but it's the shit and the smell I'm like the brown part I'm like yeah that was a nasty part <laughs> the smearing of the residue from the feces coming out the anus and it was just an exaggeration of the smearing of it on his shoe. Like, it was a white shoe. And I'm looking at the white shoe. It's just like, why? But it was almost like a ritual. And I'm like, mm. Mm, okay. Okay. But, yeah, it's a listen. It's a lot of men out there that's doing this shit on a down low. Get it down. Let's talk about it. Mm. 